Prior to the 2021 elections, the main conversation was about inclusiveness and uh, creating mechanisms through which young people could be allowed to participate in the political processes of their country, allowing them to clinch uh, positions of leadership so that they could be able to come up with policies that help their fellow young ones, their fellow youth. But then we saw how costly it was to enter this electoral period. It was too expensive. For the case of Mr. Bernard Onen Odoi, the current MP elect for Eastern Uganda, it was so hard for him. He says at uh, the mm, primary stage, they had to pay some uh, 2 million Uganda shillings. Yes, in the primaries. And at the national stage in the National Electoral Commission, they had to part with 3 million Uganda shillings. But then his fate was changed because the party was funding their candidates. He got some 60 million Uganda shillings to facilitate his campaigns. But then if you look at uh, other political parties, the youth actually had more problems. They had more problems. Some couldn't be even nominated in that regard. And that brought us to a conversation about how expensive the electoral process had been during the 2021 uh, general election. But then Bernard Odoi Onen beat all odds. There were conversations about how he was of age, how he was born in 1991, how he was born in 1982, how he was born in 1983. <laughs> Four different dates. And but then he beat six. all those odds and he's the newly elected uh, youth MP elect for Eastern Uganda. And he joins us right now on the show to make sense of the issues that have taken center stage since then or since his election. A very good morning, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So what is the latest? How costly was it to actually engage in this electoral process? There were so, so many challenges talked about uh, when it comes to the youth. Mm. Well, uh, good morning to our dear listeners. I'm very much privileged to be hosted here today to clarify on a few issues. Well, I think there's a lot that Parliament has to do, to, mm. especially in regards to youth uh, elections. Over time, election has been monetized so much that uh, without money, you can't make sense mm. out of it. Mm. Some of us have only been lucky that uh, because of our background, we have been able to beat all odds and still win this election. But the election has been too expensive because everyone thinks it's all about money. You need money to win these elections. That illusion we have overcome. As a candidate, we, we had to pay. Uh, I subscribed to NRM party, and uh, they passed a regulation that every candidate must pay for their nomination. Mm. And so I had to look for that money. Mm. I'm a hustler. I come from the background of waste management in Kampala. Uh, everyone knows Odoi. Bernard Onen is a garbage collector in Kampala Metropolitan. I also do fumigation with so many youth around. So I mobilized resources, talked to friends, and we raised, we raised the money needed for mm. NRM nomination. We went for the primaries. We were 17 candidates, mm. <coughs> sons and daughters of very powerful mm. individuals. Mm. But we still managed to beat all odds, and uh, we won that election. Then National Electoral Commission also demanded, mm. asked, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's the law that you have to pay 3 million shillings for you to be nominated as, the candid as a candidate for uh, MPship. Mm. I had to look for that money. Of course, then I had won the NRM flag. Mm. And as a party, there's a mechanism that all flag bearers are facilitated. Mm. So I got the money from NRM. And we, all the flag bearers of NRM, uh, got the money and we paid for our nomination. Mm -hmm. However, this whole thing can be mitigated. Mm -hmm. I want to make a critical analysis of our youth election. It's an electoral college where all the delegates converge in one place. In eastern Uganda, we have over 40 districts. So we have three delegates per sub-county mm -hmm. and nine delegates at the district level. Now, all these delegates are required, like for our case, mm. you have to travel from your respective districts as far as Katakui, Jinja, Mayuge, Kamuli, Bukwo, Tumbale. Mm. Now, this practice, I think, should be changed. It's one of the things we should consider. Indeed, it's been contested. Go y ahead. Yeah. Uh, you find that electoral commission, whereas they have a budget mm. to facilitate the delegates, mm. but this money is not given to them before. Mm. You must find your own means of leaving your home district as a delegate as a delegate then travel 
to the venue. So such circumstances as subject to making these uh, delegates, you know, now they become to very yeah vulnerable because they'll call you. Yes. They'll call you the candidate. Mm. Yes, so do I'm here. I'm stuck. Your mm. opponents have sent buses. Mm. They are here. I didn't pay for any bus, but most of my mm. friends with whom we are competing with. Uh, they they managed to facilitate and people boarded the mm. the buses from their respective mm. districts to Mbale. Yes. Now this practice can be curtailed. Mm. Electoral commission should find mechanism of sending at least part of the allowances to these delegates prior because people have issues. It shouldn't be in their own floric to look for this money. Mm. People are living in hardship. We've just been faced with COVID, where some of us. Uh, stood tall to defend and protect this country. Now, you find that someone, regardless of mm. the problems you have, mm. you must travel to the venue. Mm. How you travel there, it is at the mercy of you and the candidate. Now, this makes all the delegates vulnerable to bribery. So meaning if this candidate is going to pay you some money, then that person has your vote. Exactly, something like that. Mm. But this is something that we st I, as a candidate, mm. stood firm. Uh, of course, delegates called me, you're the NRM flag bearer, they gave you facilitation, but I said yes, but we will meet at the venue. Are these, I, are these delegates, Mr. Bernard Odoi Onen, representative of the will of the young people within Uganda, if they elect a leader like, like yourself, are you representative of what the young people want? Should that be changed and we let people vote instead of the delegates? Of course, this, 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 this whole electoral process mm. was enacted by parliament. Mm. This is an electoral college. Not mm. everyone votes. Mm. Though it's Can it be changed? Should it be changed? No, for now, I think we are okay with that model of, of Even of though the delegates college. are actually being bribed and what should being be paid adjusted, to choose leaders? What should be adjusted mm. is we have to push electoral commission mm. to start facilitating delegates right from the time they are required to leave their homes and report to the voting venue. Alternatively, voting can, the law can be amended mm. and voting takes place within uh, the confines of the district. Mm. Such, we, we witnessed this during the NRM primaries. Mm. Election took place at the district. Yet initially we would go to Nambole, mm. centrally converge, mm. and uh, delegates cast their vote. This same ordeal can be changed mm. so that we are not left at the mercy of voters. People have to to look for money, to, to, to try and change the mindset of the delegates. Mm -hmm. It's so dangerous, yet it is manageable. Because the Electoral Commission was giving us, because I was also a delegate, mm. so even me, I was given mm. 530,000. This money is given to you after voting. Mm. No one bothers to know how do you travel from home, where are you going to sleep, what are you going to eat. Mm. Remember, you are transisting from your home, to a, a district where you had never been to. So if the delegates were compromised, should we actually surmise and say the election was not free and fair? No, the election was very fair. Mm. I'm only uh, putting holds on what should be considered mm. in the near future. Mm. Amidst all that, I emerged the best candidate mm. and I won because of the history mm. that we share with these voters. I had very strong competitors in this race. I, I, I've learned as a person so many ideas, new ideas. I've learned from them. They're professionals. They're very competitive. They gave me a very stiff mm. challenge. But at the end of the day, because of the ideas that we shared mm. with the delegates. Away from Bernard Oney as an individual, let's talk about youth as a whole. What do you think is stopping them? What are some of the factors stopping the young people, the youth, from engaging in politics besides the issue of money? Of course, there's uh, one lack of information. Mm. Before electioneering comes mm. on board, no one is coming to us, the young people. Mm. Be it the politicians at the national level, they mind <coughs> their own business. So there is a huge gap. There's a huge political gap mm. in form of messages mm. that youth are only considered when it is time for voting, mm. when it is time for issues like... Uh, uh, violence, that is when politicians will come. When they a need them to yes, fight. Yes, either to ask behalf. you to mm. vote for them, or when they are defeated in a civil way, mm. they mobilize the unsuspecting young people 
and make them unruly. So young people the only get benefit, used close to the election period. Yes, for the selfish mm. benefit of these politicians. Mm. There's a huge gap that I feel as a leader, wholesomely we should now address and communicate to mm. our young people so that this mindset Indeed. and the notion changes. You beat so many challenges during that electoral period. Bernard Oneno Doy, yes. I was reading so many stories and about how your age was being contested. They yes. say you were born in 1990, you were born in 1991, you were born in 1980, you were born in 19... 1982 and 1980 and 1983. 83. Four mm -hmm. dates. Four mm -hmm. different dates. Bernard Doy on When yeah, were you born be, exactly? Be, Which one is the right date? 28th August mm. 1991. 29 now. You're 29 years now. Yes. Mm. Now, between you and me, mm. and really as a country, mm. uh, this country has laws, this country has policies. Mm. Uh, we don't just confer age mm. or otherwise by ourselves electoral commission mm. the entity mandated to organize elections by law picks information mm. data from NIRA mm. electoral commission simply compiles mm. now when you look through the information at NIRA vis-a-vis -vis the information at electoral commission you realize there was an error. Mm. You and I, as citizens of this country, mm. as voters, we don't compile this register. We don't compile the voters register. Mm. It is the work of the electoral commission. We pay taxes, which taxes is then used to facilitate this whole process. Now, if you take a, a critical look into yeah. the data, mm. you realize there was an error on the side of the electoral commission. On the side of the electoral commission. During compilation. Yes. Now, NIRA, the mm. entity that is mandated to compile mm. data, biodata, from which electoral commission compiles the national register, uh, cleared mm. that. Mm. They wrote a letter to uh, electoral commission right. that, look, this is the information we have in our system. Mm. I personally, it's on record. During uh, the time when National Electoral Commission was displaying the register, especially the youth register, special interest register, that was the period we were asked to, one, cross-check with the displayed data. Two, that was the time we were required to transfer. If, say, you are voting in Kampala and you want to transfer to Kamuli, that was the period. I have information, I have data, I have uh, evidence that... I complained that one, the information on your register is not, uh, does not tally mm. with what I have mm. in NIRA. Mm. I made that. I was given a form. I filled that form, which was supposed to be cleared. Mm. I also transferred because then I was voting from a different polling station. And because then I had shifted mm. from Kampala back to Toro. So I transferred my voting from one polling station to another. But for EC mm. effected the transfer, mm. but they did not effect the mismatch of the data mm. available in their system. That was later mm. confirmed, and uh, it was about time mm. that... Um, and victory but, was on your side. But You're of now an MP elect. Eastern Uganda swearing in is in the your thing. So as soon as you swear in, what is likely on your agenda? Of course, uh, one, we, I come from the background of entrepreneurship. Mm. Looking at developed countries, uh, they have developed because of entrepreneurship mm. and skills. Mm. So my focus will be political empowerment, social economic empowerment. Mm -hmm. Politically, the young people are not in tandem with what happens in the house. Mm. They are not in tandem with what happened, even at our respective district. Mm. So it is within our mandate to try and bridge that gap. I can give you an example. Now we have so many different youth programs, youth livelihood, a MIOGA program. Mm. But if you walk and take a random uh, sample and ask a young people, even in, in Kampala along the streets and ask, what are the requirements for you to benefit from, say, Youth Fund or Emioga? Mm. They don't know. Most of us actually are not aware. This should be the task of us, the leaders, that let's get this information. Let's push government so that this same information, most of our people are not even educated. 
Can we break it down to our local languages? Can we use, we have radio stations mm. all over the country. Can government pay entities like NTV to translate this mm. and <coughs> take this information to our people? Mm. There are so many good programs of the government, but the information is not known mm -hmm. down there. Meaning the people who come up with these, you know, uh, uh, policies and so forth have to institute awareness campaign teams Ex that should have to go to the communities Ex exactly. to make them aware of the programs exactly. that have been made. Exactly. Not just making the youth uh, livelihood fan and then you just leave it at that. You yes. wait for a press conference and then you talk to the young people. If you make a youth livelihood fan, create a committee that is going to sensitize the young people on what they need to be able to purchase money from the same fan. Exactly. Mm. We have uh, youth leadership right from our villages. Mm. We have youth leadership from the village, parish, mm. sub-county, district, and at the national mm. level. But these people are redundant. It mm. should be within our mandate mm. to take this information back. Mm. Also, there's need for empowerment. We have district executives, mm. but the money given, I can give you an example mm. of my district, Tororo, mm. and other districts. The money, the funding they get from government is like 3 million shillings for a whole year. How will they use that little money to mount a government project? How will they use that money to take the message back to our people. The so. message has been sent home. That is Bernard Odoi Onen, the youth MP elect for Eastern Uganda. We wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Bernard. All right, you're still watching Morning at NTV. Very, very insightful conversations that we are having. Please do not move a muscle. We shall only take a breather and return with Latif Sebagala, the MP elect, Kawempe North, on the case of missing persons here in Uganda.